morning, everyone. I'm Serena Scotton. I'm working um, at the European Heat Pump Association, uh, which is the VP leader for communication dissemination in the Heat for Cool project. I'm happy to see so many people connecting today for the Heat for Cool uh, final online conference. Um, I would like to present to you the agenda foreseen for today's event. So we will start with the presentation provided by the project coordinators. Then uh, we will have a um, policy presentation and provided by our policy officer at the European Commission, Eleftherios Burdakis, who will uh, um, give us a presentation about how policy can support uh, the renovation of buildings. Then we will go more into details and we will present you the results from the Heat for Cool demo sites, um, starting with the Valencia demo site, Shorzov, Budapest, and Sofia. We will uh, proceed with a presentation provided by Rossano, Scotia from Polimi, who will uh, sum up, let's say, the results and uh, um, will tell us more how the results match the goals of the project. We will continue with an exploitation um, strategy presented by Hugo, and we will conclude uh, with um, an overview of the current uh, European heating and cooling policy provided by Josephine. As you see, we um, kept uh, a 20 minutes of uh, panel discussion at the end of uh, this event. So. Uh, whenever you have a question for the panel during the event, please submit your questions via the Q&A box that you have. Uh, and then um, in each message, please also uh, write the name of the speaker you are referring to, and your questions will be uh, managed and answered during the Q&A um, at the end of the event, uh, who will be moderated by Paolo Zancanella. So now I just wanted to share with you this uh, very nice uh, graphic made by Colleen, which is a designer who is also participating with us today um, in this final event. Uh, this is part of the Heat for Cool team, and this is the panel that you will uh, see here today. Uh, as I said, this is only part of the Heat for Cool Consortium. The other partners are also connecting today, connected today here with us. And uh, yes, I would like really to thank the panel for being here and also the other partners for the hard work they did uh, in these years of the project. Um, so as I said, this drawing has been made by Colleen. Uh, today during the event, we will uh, have a graphic recording. This means that uh, Colleen will uh, um, draw live what will happen during this event. And um, therefore she will make a leaflet with takeaway messages. And um, her leaflet with as well all the presentations used during this event and the recording will be shared with all of you in uh, two days. Then also during the event, we uh, will post uh, um, on social media. So here you can see uh, the tags. So here uh, you can see the Hit for Cool accounts. Uh, and if you want also to uh, share and talk about uh, uh, this event, please feel free to tag Hit for Cool on Twitter and LinkedIn. And you can also use the hashtag it for cool final event. So this was all from this presentation. So I'm happy to officially start, let's say the um, conference with the first presentation provided by Paolo Zancanella and Marcello Aprile. I really um, would like to stress again to all the attendees, please use the um, Q&A for any questions you might have. Paolo and Marcello, please um, share your screen and um, the floor is yours. Thank you, Serena. I'm just sharing my screen as we speak. Are you able to see the screen? Just a second. Uh, it says that you, yes, now yes, perfect. Okay, excellent. 
Okay, so good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Paolo Zancanella, project manager at the Politecnico di Milano, uh, Department of Energy, and uh, together with Marcello Aprile, coordinator of the Eat for Cool project, we are happy to kickstart this uh, uh, final event uh, today, and we will provide you uh, an overview of the project. Uh, so for, uh, um, hold on. Yes, so for the benefit of those who, uh, who don't know, uh, I just uh, sum up uh, some uh, um, key facts and information of the uh, Horizon 2020 Innovation Action Project uh, funded by the European Union. Uh, Heat for Cool has received uh, uh, 5.4 million uh, euros of uh, EU funding and it will last uh, for four years and a half, but this is also including uh, the extension of six months that we, we had uh, due to the COVID pandemic. The consortium is made of uh, 13 partners uh, um, representing 10 different countries in, the, uh, in Europe. And uh, we have developed the um, heating and cooling retrofitting solutions in three different uh, uh, residential buildings uh, uh, in Spain, uh, in Poland and Bulgaria and one uh, district level in, uh, in Hungary. Uh, this is also to differentiate the climatic zones and the heating and cooling demand for um, uh, uh, each building. Um, what else? Three, uh, there are three main heating and cooling integrating solutions that we have developed in the project and Marcello will cover these in more details. However, this can be summarized in the, uh, an absorption heat pump integrated with the uh, um, uh, solar thermal, uh, a PV assisted uh, heat pump integrated with the uh, PCM phase chain material uh, heat batteries and a wastewater heat recovery uh, system developed in uh, Budapest in Hungary. Uh, just a quick overview of the consortium, as I said, is a very um, uh, diverse. There are three manufacturing SMEs, as you can see on the right, Fahrenheit, AES and SANA. Also, there are six engineering SMEs, and the first four that you can see, Permovat, Similec, Itznap, and Balkanica are also the uh, pilot site uh, manager in their respective countries. There is Button Vault uh, that uh, provided the support and design of the control of the system at pilot site level, and this uh, um, uh, was also very important for the development of the so called SHEBAMS, self correcting intelligent um, building energy management system. Uh, Solintel, uh, that is the VP leader for the exploitation of the project results and for developing a business plan uh, for the uh, results to be exploited. Then there are three academic research institutions uh, uh, which are represented by us, Politecnico di Milano, uh, coordinator of this project uh, who provided the uh, scientific and technical support at pilot site level throughout the uh, whole project life cycle. Um, uh, HSLU, which also um, contributed to the development of the, uh, the RetroSIM um, building retrofit uh, tool, uh, which will then be looked at in more details by Marcello. Technalia, uh, another important partner in our consortium, which offers the uh, cubic facility located in Bilbao, where all our um, heating and cooling retrofitting uh, technologies um, for building retrofitting have been uh, tested before being installed and commissioned at pilot site level. And also very important, our uh, industry uh, association partner represented by EPA, um, who is also, apart from the organizer of today event, uh, the, the VUP leader for the all dissemination and communication results of the Eat for Cool project. So in brief, what are the uh, Eat for Cool objectives? Uh, this uh, is, will wrap her up. It's basically to develop this uh, integrated uh, solution and to demonstrate uh, how these are uh, cost effective. And uh, uh, yes, that can be suitable for uh, building retrofitting, deep building retrofitting, to achieve uh, uh, 20 to 30 percent energy savings compared to the uh, pre-retrofitting status within 10 years, but also to uh, show how replicable these uh, technologies are 
for both uh, in the residential building at district level. Also to identify the target groups that could be interested in the market uh, for, for these uh, technologies to develop a business plan. And, uh, and finally also to support the uh, ambitious goal of the European Union to become carbon free by 2050 and support uh, the energy efficiency policies for uh, NZ. I will uh, skip this uh, final slide in order not to uh, uh, waste my time and leave the floor to Marcello. This was just the, the four different phases of the project. So starting with the retrofitting design tool, development of the technologies, as well as the integration and optimization. And finally, the evaluation uh, with the, uh, the evaluation of the data, which uh, we have received uh, uh, by the pilot site managers and comparison with the uh, plan results. So uh, this is, uh, 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 I stop here and I will let now uh, Marcello to continue uh, with the presentation related to the it for cool technologies and the tools that have been uh, um, integrated uh, uh, and developed at pilot site level. Marcello. Thank you, Paolo. Yes. So I will continue presenting very briefly the main technological solution that have been deployed within the project. Uh, the first one is an online simulation tool that can be used to assess the performance of different heating and cooling plants suitable for building retrofitting projects. And the three that follow are packages or integrated systems based on solar energy, heat pumps, and waste heat recovery, like number two, solar thermal and absorption heat pump, Number three, solar photovoltaics, electrical heat pump, and phase change storage. And number four, heat pump and basic heating and cooling complemented by waste heat recovery. And last but not least, number five, a building energy management system with self-tuning capabilities of a comfort set point. And next, please, Paolo. Concerning the online simulation tool, and here you can see at the front end where high level inputs are collected, like uh, building location, size, and pre existing heating systems. And uh, next, please, some simulation results where different plants are evaluated based on, on different uh, in a range of performance indicators like non-renewable primary energy, renewable energy contribution, CO2 emissions, and so forth. And several challenges were faced during the development of a tool to mention a few, the large number of possible layouts, the pre-selection of more suitable layouts to limit the computational load, the need to automatically size the system components based on the building energy needs, and the need for fast computation, that is a yearly simulation shall take only a few seconds. And in this last slide, you can see the graphical outputs where energy flows and temperature are aggregated at month level. Next, moving to the heating and cooling technologies that have been developed and demonstrated, I will briefly present the main innovations supported by the project concerning heat pumps Fahrenheit developed a new adsorption chiller using zeolite coated heat exchangers, in addition to the one based on silicon gel heat exchangers. Such units are suitable for solar cooling since they can be operated with low desorption temperatures. In the case of silica gel, the minimum driving temperature is approximately 60 degrees Celsius. And next, we see the phase change storage developed by SANAMP. Besides testing different phase change materials with different transition temperatures, SANAMP has developed a new compact unit, which is dual ported. Uh, that means that the loading and the unloading of the thermal energy can occur at the same time. And among the advantages of phase change storages uh, with respect to the more conventional water one, uh, we can surely mention compactness and modularity, which greatly enhance the possibility of installation in existing buildings, where space availability is of main concern. 
Regarding the district heating and cooling solution, uh, Thermovat has developed a wastewater heat exchanger that works as a heat source for the heat pump when the system operates in heating mode and as a heat sink in cooling mode, of course. And the interesting parts are the wastewater screening station and the automatic cleaning uh, method of the heat exchangers that we see in the picture since periodical cleaning is necessary to preserve heat transfer effectiveness in this kind of heat recovery systems. And next and last, uh, the building management system architecture developed by Vattenbolt consists of a gateway to transfer data between actuators, sensor meters on one side and cloud services on the other side where cloud services perform information management comfort profiling and automation of control. Uh, finally, the heat for cool retrofit solutions have been installed, as Paolo mentioned before, in four pilot sites, as you can see here, uh, three of which, the first three on the left, are small to medium-sized residences, and one is a district comprising three large public buildings. And the details about each installation will be provided soon in a dedicated session. So for now, I conclude here my presentation. Thank you. Many thanks to Paolo and Marcello. Uh, before we proceed with the second presentation, I just would like to uh, mention to the participants that in the uh, top right section, uh, you have the view options in which you can uh, select which uh, view you prefer. So you can have the uh, speaker or gallery and uh, yeah, you can manage from there your setting. Um, now I would like to present uh, uh, the second speaker who is Eleftherios, who will provide us a presentation about the current European policies who are supporting building renovation. So Eleftherios, the floor is yours. And you can, yes, I see that you're already sharing your screen. Uh, good morning. Uh, can you see the presentation? Uh, yes. Okay, I will go to presentation mode. Perfect. Okay. Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Serena, for the introduction. Um, I'm a policy officer in the European Commission in uh, DG for Research and Innovation, and I have the pleasure to be the project officer of uh, Heat for Cool. And I will uh, present some uh, of the Commission initiatives to support the renovation of our buildings. Uh, first of all, some key facts for EU buildings. The uh, built environment in the EU is responsible for 40% of the energy use and 30% uh, of the CO2 emissions. Uh, it is estimated that uh, we spend 90% of our time indoors. Uh, this is a pre-COVID uh, figure. I, the updated must be around 99.9%. And uh, although we spend uh, most of this time in, uh, in, in non-energy efficient buildings, unfortunately, the average renovation rate across the EU is at a disappointingly low level of uh, 1%. Uh, one and a half uh, year ago, the President uh, von der Leyen, in her inauguration speech, uh, presented the six uh, priorities of the Commission, among which is the European Green Deal. I would dare to say that is our flagship uh, program. And in her speech, uh, she mentioned that uh, the Green Deal is a new growth strategy for a growth that gives back more than it takes away. It shows how to transform our way of living and working of producing and consuming so that we live healthier and make our businesses innovative. I would say that it's, it affects all kinds of uh, our activities and it will uh, transform our uh, way of uh, living. A major initiative of, uh, that is part of the Green Deal is the renovation wave. The renovation wave will address the low decarbonization and renovation rates and uh, it, it will uh, improve the energy efficiency of the EU building stock. It will stimulate economic growth, which is 
even more crucial now with the economic crisis that is following the pandemic. It will provide jobs and boost the construction sector and, of course, uh, strengthen the European uh, industrial competitiveness. As a roadmap was published uh, one year ago and the strategic communication and an action plan were published last October, which, can, uh, uh, which are accessible uh, in the link at the bottom of uh, this slide. The aim of the renovation wave is to at least double the renovation rates in the next 10 years and make sure that renovations lead to higher energy and resource efficiency. It, the renovation of at least 35 million buildings and the creation of 160,000 additional green jobs in the construction sector by 2030 and to be a solution for the energy poverty issue. Uh, it is estimated that 34 million of our fellow EU citizens are currently uh, facing uh, energy poverty. Uh, there are many initiatives uh, uh, that are uh, aiming to address uh, the renovation of buildings also in uh, Horizon Europe, the new uh, research and innovation funding program that is uh, the successor of uh, Horizon 2020. Uh, among these uh, initiatives is uh, the mission on uh, cities. Uh, the missions are a portfolio of actions across discipline uh, intended to achieve a bold, inspirational and measurable goal within a set time frame uh, with impact for the whole society and policy making, as well as relevance for a significant part of the European population. Five uh, missions were uh, identified, among which is the mission on climate neutral and smart cities. The aim of this city is uh, to uh, support, promote and showcase 100 European cities, uh, which will be the lighthouses of this program and uh, operate as an example for the rest of the society so that uh, Europe uh, becomes climate neutral by 2050. The term cities is a broad term and a city can be a city district, a neighborhood uh, or a general uh, zone of public interest like an airport, university and uh, so on. And the uh, cities, although they occupy only 3% of uh, land globally, they are responsible for 72% of the global greenhouse gas emissions. And this, it is estimated that 85% of Europeans will live in cities by 2050. So it's really crucial to uh, make our cities uh, uh, sustainable and climate neutral. The Commission Board uh, submitted their uh, final report uh, last September to the European Commission, and the report is uh, accessible in the link in the bottom of uh, this uh, slide. Another initiative in the Horizon Europe is the Build for People uh, Public-Private Partnership, which is the continuation of the energy efficient uh, partnership uh, that uh, uh, Heat for Cooler received uh, funding from. So the, the uh, EB, uh, contractual public-private partnership that was finished uh, 31st December 2020. The focus was uh, the energy performance of buildings and the partners were mainly construction sector industry. And the approach was to financially support the technology driven innovation, focusing uh, on uh, design of buildings, advanced material and, and nanotechnology, technology building blocks and the prefabrication, construction processes, uh, ICT, uh, building information modeling, and so on. In the new partnership, a more holistic, uh, broad approach uh, uh, is uh, set. The partners will represent various actors across the whole uh, building value chain. And the scope is a full decarbonization, sustainability, and the better living conditions for the occupants. Uh, uh, the approach is to have the people in the center and uh, aiming at lasting behavioral uh, change to deliver under the long-term goals set by the Green Deal. 
This holistic approach is, was also reflected in while drafting the work uh, program where uh, nine DGs contributed uh, in this uh, co-creation uh, exercise. And uh, the focus is primarily on the renovation of uh, existing buildings. Another initiative that was uh, recently uh, announced is the new European Bauhaus. Similarly to the original Bauhaus movement, uh, uh, the goal of uh, this initiative is, is to shape a new movement that will explore how to live better together, how to make the Green Deal a positive, tangible experience for all of us, and to connect people from different disciplines and backgrounds and with different perspectives and cultures so that we move beyond form follows function, factoring in the planet and social purposes to support the development of lead markets and sustainability and make the whole EU think and deliver out of the box. The whole aim is not just to deliver, let's say, dull buildings that are only energy efficient, but to combine also uh, the aesthetics with the functionality. The, from mid-February to mid-March, uh, three info sessions, uh, I'm sorry, six info sessions uh, took place. Uh, the slides are available in this uh, link shown in the middle of the uh, slide. And uh, now we are still in the co-creation phase. So you are all invited to uh, visit the website of the initiative and contribute with uh, your ideas into shaping uh, this new European Bauhaus uh, movement. Uh, thank you for your attention and I will be happy to answer any question. Many thanks, uh, Lefterius, to, um, for your very interesting presentation and for your insights about the current EU um, policies. Um, we can now start uh, the demo site session. So I suggest uh, um, Javier, uh, you can share your screen and you can start presenting uh, the um, results from uh, the demo site in Valencia. Javier, you're muted. Now. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Serena, for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, um, sorry to interrupt, um, because I know that you have two screens. We don't see your presentation yet. We see yes. a blue screen. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now, Can yes. you see now? Yes, okay. perfect. OK, good morning, everyone. I'm Javier Biosca, and I'm going to show you the retrofitting we have done in the Valencia pilot site. The pilot building is a residential building of four floors with three apartments at each floor, <clears throat> thus 12 apartments in total. Then at each floor, there is one apartment with 38 square meters, another one with 57 square meters, and the last one with 57.5 square meters. The building has a terrace and double sloped roof, and its orientation is from southeast to northwest. Actually, it's 24 degrees turned from east to south. And the building is located in the old city in Valencia. The previous facility consisted in a building centralized generation system for the production of the heat transfer fluid in order to satisfy the heating and cooling demands and also the domestic hot water demand. And this generation system were three independent air water reversible heat pumps of 15 kilowatt each one. And there were also two storage tanks in order to store the hot and cold water as the heat transfer fit for these thermal energies. And these heating and cooling thermal energies were delivered by fan coils at each apartment. 
The retrofitted facility consists in a solar thermal system coupled with an absorption heat pump, which only works in cooling mode. And these generation systems are supported by the old heat pumps. There are also storage tanks for the storage of the solar cooling and heating productions. And the retrofitting also comprises the implementation of the SCI BEMS. This is the self-correcting intelligent building energy management system. Then the retrofitting activities were the installation of the solar thermal panels with around 50 square meters, the installation of the solar storage tank in order to store the solar production and the absorption unit within a ventilated enclosure and the recooler with, uh, with also an anti-freezing heater in order to avoid the freezing problems of the water contained inside since this component is placed outdoors. Also the installation of sensors and meters, new fan coil control screens and set wave gateways for the net connection of the sensors and controls. And the old gas boiler was also, also removed. Here we can see a facility scheme from a screen of the monitoring system dashboard. You can see we have the solar thermal panels connected to the solar storage tank, which fits the absorption unit. And this absorption unit needs to be connected to a recooler in order to dissipate the waste heat. And this generation system is supported by the old heat pumps in order to charge the cooling tank and the heating tank. As you can see in this monitoring system, we can see the temperature at several points in the facility. And also we can control several components as the three-way belts and the old heat pumps or the absorption unit. This monitoring system allows us to assess the system performance and it will operate even after the project is finished and the data is stored at the server. Finally, the retrofitting also comprises the implementation of the SCI BEMS. This is a set of smart devices that allow the monitoring of apartment conditions, the recording of Fenkel thermostat status, and the control actions performed by the occupants, and also the remote control of Fenkel's at its apartment. Then, since the identified events from user actions, the profiling algorithm of the SCI BEMS estimates the comfort discomfort probabilities for a defined temperature, as we can see in this, in this graph. From the of the picture. And then the set point control automation algorithm of the SCI BEMS sends the lower and upper temperature limits to the fan coil thermostats as the heating and cooling set points. And this is all about the retrofitting we have done in the Valencia pilot site. Thank you very much, Javier, for um, presenting us uh, um, the results from the Valencia demo site. We can now proceed uh, with uh, Jakub, who will uh, present us the data from the demo site in Shorzo. Okay, I will share my presentation. Yes. We can see it. Okay. Uh, so, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Jakub Pluta, and uh, I'm representing uh, ISNAP company, an SME from Poland, which provides the uh, building being the demo site in Heat for Cool project. Uh, firstly, I would like to uh, present a little about our building. Uh, it is a historical multifamily house, uh, multifamily residential building with uh, 12 residential apartments and uh, three commercial spaces uh, on uh, the ground floor. Uh, it has been constructed in uh, 1902 and uh, 
in the Heat for Cool project, only uh, 11 of the residential apartments are uh, retrofitted. And the main uh, source of uh, space heating, heat for space heating and uh, hot water preparation are individual gas boilers in uh, apartments. Uh, before the retrofitting in uh, our building, we had uh, four types of uh, space heating and domestic hot water uh, systems. Uh, the most common was uh, where uh, both space heating and domestic hot water preparation has been uh, performed by uh, gas boilers. Uh, also uh, in the project, we uh, stayed by uh, this system. Mm. Also, another system uh, present in the building was where uh, the gas uh, boilers provided uh, heat for space heating, but uh, domestic hot water has been provided by uh, separate electric uh, heaters or uh, some electric storage tank for located in the kitchen, bathroom, or in uh, uh, toilets. And the first system was where both space heating and uh, domestic hot water preparation has been done by uh, electric uh, heaters. And uh, also in two apartments, we uh, met the uh, system number four, where uh, the domestic hot water has been provided by electric heater, but uh, space heating was realized uh, locally in the rooms where uh, coal stoves were uh, located. Uh, the technologies which has been implemented in our building in the project are uh, 30 kilowatt hour, 30 kilowatts uh, air to water heat pump. Uh, for the hot water preparation, there is installed uh, eight uh, heat batteries with phase change materials inside with a total capacity of the system 96 kilowatt hours. On the roof of the building, uh, we have installed uh, 43 LG photovoltaic panels and uh, solar edge inverter to convert the uh, DC to AC. Uh, regarding the uh, retrofitted space heating system, we have uh, two separate uh, circuits in two parts of the system in the building. Uh, the first uh, circuit is uh, between the heat pump and uh, the heat exchanger. And the second part are individual heating, system in, heating systems in uh, apartments. Uh, we provided some modernization in the uh, boilers and uh, their uh, circulation pumps uh, work. Uh, Boiler, the circulation pumps inside the apartments are now controlled by a separate uh, controller based on the indoor temperature. And uh, it allows us to uh, work the uh, heating installation in apartments uh, without need of the uh, gas burner uh, work. Of course, if the heat provided by the heat pump is not enough for the apartment, then the gas burner will start and uh, it will start the gas consumption. Uh, also to prevent the situation where uh, the, mm, first, the water in the first circuit is heated by the installation of the apartment, we installed uh, next to each uh, heat exchanger, a three-way valve controlled by the controller, uh, which uh, runs the water in bypass if the temperature supplied by uh, the heat pump is lower than in the internal installation of the apartment. Mm. In, uh, the heat pump is able to provide to the apartment the supply temperature uh, between 55 to 60 uh, degrees. It has a uh, possibility to provide higher temperatures, but uh, according to the simulations before the retrofitting, this temperatures uh, allowing us to uh, achieve the biggest efficiency of the system. On the photos on the left and uh, right, uh, you can see the examples of uh, heat meters installation and installation of the uh, insulated heat exchanger. 
next to the boilers. And uh, on the mid in the middle, there is the heat exchanger installed in the basement on the main uh, heating circuit. Uh, in the uh, hot water preparation system, we have also uh, two parts of the system connected through uh, the uh, eight heat batteries with the phase change materials. They are inst installed in uh, the room in uh, the basement. Mm -hmm. The first part is between the heat pump and the heat batteries. This is the heat battery charging circuit with a circulation pump, which is controlled by a separate Siemens controller. Uh, and its work is con uh, managing based on the uh, temperatures from the sensor installed inside the heat batteries. Uh, we are able with the system to provide uh, to the apartments the hot water temp uh, temperature around 49, sorry, 41 uh, degrees. And uh, also uh, it is enough for a day to uh, charge the heat batteries only once to provide the hot water to the apartments. Um, the heat pump installed uh, in the building, it is the outside unit uh, with uh, 30 uh, kilowatt uh, power. Uh, it stands on a concrete foundation previously prepared, uh, which is uh, inside uh, filled with uh, gravel. And uh, under this is the perforated pipe, which uh, allows to direct the uh, condensate directly to the uh, rain sewage uh, system. Uh, as the heat pump is in a uh, around 11 uh, meters from uh, the building. It's uh, from the pipes connecting the basement of the building with the heat pump are uh, twin pre-insulated pipes, which uh, runs in the ground. The photovoltaic system installed in the building consists of uh, 43 uh, LG panels, each uh, with a power of 40, 340 uh, watts and the total generation of the system is uh, 1462 watts. The photovoltaic installation is connected to a 15 kilowatts uh, solar edge inverter, which is connected also to the internet and uh, our monitoring platform. Uh, this, uh, together with uh, installed smart meter, it allows us to uh, monitor the, both the production of the system, but also uh, consumption of the building, uh, self-consumption of the electricity generated, and uh, the import and export of energy between the building and uh, the uh, external grid. Um, ISNAP applied to the uh, energy supplier for a uh, connection of the micro installation to the grid. And on February 2020, uh, the two-way electricity meter has been installed uh, and then this uh, installation started to work. Uh, in the building, uh, we implemented the uh, self-correcting intelligent uh, building energy management system. Uh, the system mainly uh, consists of the uh, Z-Wave uh, equipment like uh, the Fibaro thermostats on the radiators and uh, multi-sensors, which provide information about uh, inside uh, temperatures in apartments, the motions and uh, the relative humidity. Together with our uh, monitoring platform, we are able to control uh, the thermostats, uh, the uh, heat pump, the circulation pumps in the building, uh, and uh, the photovoltaic installation and charging of the heat batteries. Also, uh, tenants in the apartments have some possibility of uh, control of their, their systems. With, uh, they can change the thermostats uh, set points in uh, radiators and also the uh, set points in uh, boilers. Mm, the set points in uh, change set points in the uh, radiator thermostats will be uh, remembered by the uh, 
um, by the uh, side bands as some uh, require, um, requirements of uh, the tenants and then the system will adjust to uh, this new set points. On the scheme, uh, you can see the complete uh, system in our demo site. We have uh, here the, uh, the first part of the heating system between the heat pump and the apartment, the internal installation of the apartments, the heat batteries charging circuit and uh, the hot water distribution circuit to the apartment. Um, on the green, there is uh, marked the uh, monitoring devices, like uh, to measure the efficiency of the system, we uh, installed uh, three heat meters in the basement and also three heat meters in uh, the apartments, two for space heating uh, system and uh, one for uh, domestic hot water system. To uh, measure consumption of electricity, we uh, measure, we installed separate electricity meters for the heat pump, for the circulation pumps. And for the heat pump and photovoltaic installation monitoring, we also installed a small uh, meteorological station, providing us the information about uh, solar radiation, outside temperature and uh, relative uh, humidity. Hey, Jakub, sorry to, oh, okay. This was your last Much slide. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Sorry. Um, I just remind all speakers, please try to stick to your 10 minutes uh, because we have many, many presentations today. Um, indeed, now, before continuing with the two uh, other demo sets presentation, I would like to uh, check with you how the uh, live graph recording is going. So I'll ask Corinne, Corinne to please uh, share her screen so we can see uh, the uh, messages um that uh, she is uh, let's say extracting from each presentation very nice so as you know she is drawing live so this will be an ongoing uh, work during the entire uh, duration of the webinar so many thanks for showing this we will uh, check check it again uh, in a few presentations so we can continue now and um, knowing more about what's uh, happened in the Budapest uh, demo site. So, Pal, the floor is yours and you can now share your screen. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me add uh, uh, a new spot uh, on the map. Uh, it's Budapest uh, and the ore site here. Uh, I hope that you can uh, see my screen. Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, so Budapest is a special, special site in terms of size and in terms of the technology also. Uh, here we introduced the uh, sewage heat uh, recovery system, where we extract the heat from the communal uh, sewage system. Uh, so uh, that's, uh, that's why uh, in Budapest we, we focus on the efficiency of, uh, of a large scale system. Uh, where we uh, demonstrate not just uh, having uh, a large scale operation, but uh, uh, also uh, development on, on specific elements of, uh, of this side. Uh, we focus on uh, not just efficiency, but uh, very good maintenance of uh, this system, which, which is essential uh, when we operate uh, for a long time. Uh, this system was uh, invented, uh, the sewage heat recovery by our company 12 years ago, and all this technology is patented in 37 countries. Uh, so we, uh, we, we develop uh, uh, the active plants and we are already a mature phase and in a big scale of such in, uh, installations. Uh, so let me introduce the site itself. Uh, uh, basically, we are in, in Budapest District 4, uh, where we uh, heat up and cool down large buildings, including the, the mayor's office and the governmental uh, window and also a new market hall. Uh, totally uh, 12,500 uh, uh, square meter surface uh, with our uh, technology. Uh, that is uh, 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 that is descri described uh, in, in this uh, uh, site. So we extract heat from the raw uh, communal wastewater flow first stage that we screen wastewater flows and then we do a heat exchange and then we heat pump. I had a question on that. So heat pumps are not special. They are water to water heat pumps. Uh, 
uh, they are high grade uh, screw type uh, heat pumps uh, that we use in our installations. Here is some some picture of the the buildings very very briefly. So we have two smaller buildings uh, and one big one, which, which is a new market hall. We have uh, old installations like mayor's office, over 100 years old building, and uh, uh, 12 years uh, old building, and, and a completely new uh, market hall here on operation. And here we have uh, uh, the system installed completely underground. Uh, we are under under the the main square of uh, this uh, district, where we have the screens and uh, uh, and the heat exchangers. So it is completely fits in uh, the landscape of uh, of a of a dis district because we are under under a parking uh, space of uh, of this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this part of the city. So here you see uh, the the connection of the installations. Uh, we have uh, basically two uh, two separate uh, sites. So we have one one site where we have the wastewater screening for the whole installation. Then we had have the heat exchanger in the same place. One of the heat pumps are here at the same site, and the other other heat pump is under the new market hall. Uh, where we worked a lot is to develop a good uh, <clears throat> wastewater screening. Uh, and uh, a very good heat exchange. Uh, so we, we developed our equipments in this respect. Uh, the in invention that we made here is basically uh, for the screening, it's a uh, washing up uh, for a good maintenance. So we, we installed automatic washing of the system, uh, let us to, to the maintenance uh, very easy and, and uh, uh, not need uh, to, to be on site. Then we worked on the uh, further development of the heat exchangers, where we invented uh, a special uh, inlet chambers and, uh, and special elements of the heat exchange uh, to do easy maintenance and easy flow. So here we use uh, different types of inlets. Uh, we use uh, reverse uh, flows, and also we work on the size of the tubes because those are the tube and shelf types uh, uh, heat exchangers. So here is some picture of the, the inlet part uh, and the outlet part of the, the heat exchanger that we modified uh, compared to uh, others and we monitorize on site. Uh, here you see the place where we put in uh, the new heat exchangers. And, and those are the, or the new heat exchangers uh, developed uh, by us. They are modified. They, they are, there is also an inlet uh, uh, to, to do a self uh, cleaning of the system. And uh, uh, also, uh, we changed the inner part, uh, uh, the piping. And then we all installed into the system all stainless steel uh, are the heat exchangers. Those are the, the old uh, screening units. So as total, the, the capacity of the system is 1.7 megawatt. I had a question for. And uh, the COP that, uh, that we achieved is between uh, three, and, 3 and 4 at this stage, because we still uh, operate in high temperature. Uh, but coming back to the, uh, to the screen installation, here you see the screen installation uh, putting uh, on place. And then, uh, then the new screens uh, on site, uh, where you can see that uh, uh, washing system that we invented uh, to do the easy maintenance of, uh, of the system. So the aim here is to operate a large scale system without being on site and, uh, and doing a very efficient uh, heat exchange uh, for the whole system. So of course, for this, uh, uh, we installed our own SCADA system. And as important part of uh, that um, uh, installation was to monitorize our results. Uh, we were the first site uh, that we started the, the monitoring in, in uh, 2019, in October. Uh, and since then, we, uh, we monitorized the, the system. Basically, we, we monitorized the, the flows, temperatures, uh, pressures, so the efficiency uh, of the system, of the, of the heat exchange. Uh, the result will be explained by, by Rosano very, very soon on our, our side. Uh, we, we can say that we, we achieved uh, uh, good development in the efficiency of the whole system uh, in the heat exchange. And uh, it was all proven that uh, such system can work in large scale. Uh, this system, as I mentioned, is 1.7 megawatt that the, our clients is the municipality. They want to upsize it to four megawatts. So the, this further development is possible. And uh, of course, we need a lot of wastewater flow. Uh, here for one megawatt, we use around uh, 3,500 cubic meter per day flow uh, to have uh, 
uh, one megawatt uh, heating and cooling uh, for our end users. So that was all about the Budapest uh, side. Uh, I let the floor for the uh, for the others. And if you have uh, questions, I had some already, just feel free to, to contact us, we will we respond to you. I had just one question and, and maybe I have one minute uh, about the, the compressors and, and about, the, uh, about the heat pumps. So the heat pumps are not specific, as I mentioned, they are screw type heat, heat pumps. We use several compressor uh, heat pumps. And uh, of course the efficiency, the COP is always higher. We can achieve COP of six if the temperature of the heating is uh, low. For example, 30 or 40 degrees at that side, we use with uh, nearly 60 degrees, which is very warm, and with relatively lower, lower COPs of three and four. Thank you for your kind attention. Many thanks, Paul. Um, now we can proceed with the final demo set presentation. So I invite Emil to share his screen. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Hello, uh, everybody. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is uh, Emil Vitanov. I'm the representative of the Bulgarian company Balkanica Energy, and I'm pleased to present the project is for crew design for the pilot site in Sofia, Bulgaria. Uh, in brief, <laughs> for our demo site, uh, the pilot site uh, is located uh, in Dubljana, neighborhood of Sofia, the capital of Bulgaria. And the demo site is two floors, multi-family apartment building that was completed in 1974. In 2000. Sorry, Emil, to interrupt. Can you uh, make it in presentation mode so we can better read uh, the text? Yes, of course. Uh, Many thanks. Yes, the text on the on the slides. Uh, yes, because now it is not in presentation mode, so uh, you shall have uh, a button on to make in presentation mode, you know, in the bottom right side of your PowerPoint. Yes, yes of course. Uh, in the brief, I'd like to do to specify it, uh, that uh, uh, I refer the, the total of uh, six apartments on four level. Up to now, we have uh, five numbers of, mass of apartments that are retrofitted. And we have a refurbished envelope, exposed facet oriented towards southeast and southwest. Uh, three numbers of apartments uh, are supplied with natural gas boilers. Uh, and uh, for, uh, uh, for domestic, hot, uh, uh, domestic hot water and two apartments with uh, coal stove electric boilers, cooling required by not yet accounted for. Uh, the building is equipped with the gas boilers for space heating and uh, hot domestic uh, water. Uh, now you can see the retrofit system in uh, Sofia. Uh, the, the, the heating system uh, is consists of an electric heat pump and uh, protection circuits module, PCM, heat battery and photovoltaic system. Uh, centralized heat pump system is chosen because uh, of the high efficiency and lack of space inside the apartments to put a heat pump and boiler. Uh, the heat pump of 10 kilowatts provided by Viotherm company is uh, um, directly connected to the PCM storage. Uh, the heated water is drained through a pipe system to two gas boilers. So <clears throat> the heat pump unit is installed at elevations in minus 2.40 meters and three phase change material also called heat batteries and installed in the vicinity of the heat pump unit. After the heat pump unit, two thermal loops are formed, one to the heat batteries and the other to the heating system. Circulation to the thermal circuit for the thermal batteries is performed via circulation pump. Uh, circulation to the heating circuit is achieved by means of second circulation pump, but only one circulating pump works at a time. A uh, priority is given, uh, of course, uh, to heat pump the uh, heat batteries uh, through a circulation uh, pump one. Uh, because during the heating season, after the heating batteries have been charged, circulation pump one will shut off and circulation pump, pump two is uh, obviously turned on. So <clears throat> the pilot building, the pilot building is divided into three thermal zones. Mm. 
each of uh, that is served by a separate gas boiler and is also linked to the heat pump unit. Uh, now you can see on the slide uh, thermal zone uh, one. Uh, this zone includes heated rooms at elevation to minus 240 meters and elevation plus uh, zero meter, as well as the staircase. The gas boiler for uh, this zone is located at elevation minus uh, to a to 40 meters, and the heating system for the zone comprised of radiators for uh, elevation uh, minus 4.40 meters and for elevation plus zero meter for radiant heating and fan coils for floor installation. Uh, <clears throat> second zone. <clears throat> Uh, includes uh, includes uh, ground floor and uh, second floor. Uh, uh, this zone covers the central and western part of the building elevations, plus 2.7 meters and plus 5.50 meters. The gas boilers for zone two is located at elevation plus four, uh, uh, 5.50 and the heating outlets for zone two are uh, only radiators. Uh, zone three includes uh, the eastern sides of the building at elevation plus uh, 2.70 meters and uh, plus uh, 5.4 uh, 50 meters as well as elevation plus 18.55 meters and the boilers for zone three is located at elevation plus uh, 5.50 meter. The heating outlets for this zone is on the floor uh, heating as you can see on the slide. Uh, for each heating zone, the following facilities is installed in vicinity to the gas boilers. Two ways for a off motorized zone valve implements the connection between the heat pump and the heating outlets for the given heating zone. Uh, also, <clears throat> hydraulic separator provides for hydraulic separations between the heat pump and the heat outlets for the given heat zone. <clears throat> Three-way, uh, three-way spherical on-off motorized zone valve uh, directs domestic hot water directly from the heat pump to the occupants, or redirects to domestic hot water through gas boiler to be heated at the desirable temperature. <clears throat> Turn back again to retrofitting system in Sofia in order to specify that uh, the implemented technologies are uh, 10 kilowatts air to the water heat pump, heat batteries based on phase change materials for hot water preparation, three heat batteries, each of 12 kilowatts. Uh, hours capacity, 36 kilowatts hours in total. PV system on the roof of the building. Uh, 24 LG modules with total generation generation of 40.28 kilo, kilowatt peak capacity. Uh, I'd like to specify that the basic elements of the heating system are the main source of the heating power gas boilers, as I mentioned, two for the whole building plus heat pump. Uh, <clears throat> heat distribution in the apartment through radiators uh, with uh, uh, thermostats, of course. Here. <clears throat> Here, uh, a diagram of the energy uh, strings of the photovoltaic system is shown. Each string is represented by 40 photovoltaic panels. For each individual string, we have one inverter of six kilowatts, which is connected to electricity meters measuring the generated electricity. Uh, the solar PV system is uh, 20. Uh, and the solar, uh, just a second, just a second. So, so the solar PV system is a 12.55 kilowatt peak capacity comprising of 42 modules. Uh, 33 modules are mounted on the southeast facing sloped roof and nine modules are mounted on the flat roof areas using when you saw mounting clamps and uh, frames and fix it using hand and balls secured to the roof substructure. Uh, Emil, sorry to interrupt. We are running out of time. So if you could wrap up in the last minute, it would be great. 
Okay, uh, because I'd like to specify something for the, the solar edge PV optimizer system facility. Uh, okay. Mm. I'd like only to specify that the inverters are connected to the internet and the monitoring platform you can see here. And the uh, two way electricity meter is installed by the energy supplier. And Solar Edge said that monitoring platform is perfectly integrated with the installant system so that the solar energy generated can be monitored uh, in uh, detail. Uh, I'm forwarding with the next, uh, the next slide. As I mentioned before, the main uh, characteristic of the hot water preheating system are heat batteries connected, three in series, uh, heat pump, and domestic hot water circuits and the command system, no balancing valves, charging of the heat batteries controlled by Siemens PLC, managing the circulation time based on uh, data from temperature sensors in the heat batteries. Um, in the pictures uh, here on the right, you can see the basement heat, uh, a photo of the controller, you can, uh, you can see. Um, so, uh, when the heat battery charging demand is generated, the controller switch on the heat pump to run demand signal. When the heat batteries are charging, the valve controls the charging full temperature between 53 degrees Celsius and uh, 55 degrees Celsius. The pump also turns on when there is flow in outlet pipe to supply preheated water to gas uh, to the gas boilers. Uh, here, the building energy management system temperature control could be seen. <clears throat> uh, so, the following, I think, the management. So, uh, the building uh, is an integrated, uh, uh, self directed intelligent building energy management system. Uh, and um, the following evaluation, the validation for the worker is heating demand of the whole building at each apartment, domestic hot water demand of whole building at each, at the, at each apartment, electricity production from uh, PV panels, electrical consumption of the heat pump, electrical consumption of the circulation pumps, PCM internal temperatures and state of charge, heat pumps, thermal production, energy consumption, Temperature in heating circuit, uh, it, uh, yes, temperatures in heated circuit as well, uh, and domestic hot water system. And uh, of course, uh, inside temperature at each apartment. Uh, Sorry, I mean, we really need to cut it here because otherwise we don't have uh, time for the others, but all the participants will receive the slides and there is also your email in there. So really, if anyone has any questions, so they can, directly contact you. Really sorry for this, but really need, if you want to have a Q&A, we really need to go forward. And uh, now we should proceed with uh, Rosano who could wrap up the, uh, okay. uh, really sorry. So Rosano, if you could proceed and um, share your screen so you can tell us more about the project goals and how this is linked with the demo sites uh, data. Thank you, Serena. Thank you for the part partners for your presentation. So let's see some results from the monitoring uh, activities. I am Rosano Scotch. I am a researcher at the Department of Energy of Politecnico di Milano. And here I wrap up the previous presentation. So uh, we did three main packages uh, installed in four pilot sites. The first one is a solar heating and cooling system in Valencia. The second one is a wastewater heat exchanger linked to an electric heat pump for a district heating and cooling system in Budapest. And the third one, it's a PV system and an electric heat pump and a phase change material heat batteries for Chorzu and Sofia. So here I show you uh, how it works, uh, the system in, in Valencia for a typical day. And this energy, uh, it's uh, used also for the production of domestic hot water. And we managed to achieve in this day a solar fraction of 20% in order to produce 120 kilowatt hour of thermal energy in the end. Now I will show you a focus on the absorption chiller for another typical day 
in this day we produce 31.5 kilowatt hour of cooling energy with a good thermal COP for this kind of machine, 0.5. Here you see that the uh, solar collectors um, may manage to uh, heat up the uh, water up to uh, 70 degrees C, which is the threshold where the adsorption chiller turn on and the adsorption chiller works from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. here with a constant inlet temperature of around 60 degrees C. The uh, temperature of the outside, it's uh, quite warm, around 30 degrees C, and you see that the uh, cold water produce uh, fall down, uh, down to 10 degrees C, and you see also an average, uh, the average cooling power of the machine, which is around 5 kilowatts. Uh, here, another focus, which show you how the user use the building in Valencia. We are mainly uh, tourists. And uh, you see uh, from this line here in yellow how they use the, this specific apartment, uh, just some days over the 10 days. Uh, here in red, you see the very high temperature achieved in Valencia up to 37 degrees C. In blue, you see the set point in the room around uh, 23 degrees C. And in orange, you see the actual temperature in the room. So you see that when people are inside, uh, the building when the mode is set to, uh, the system managed to uh, guarantee the set point asked by the user. Now we move to uh, a second uh, system, uh, to the system installed in Budapest. In this case, it's a summer typical day, so we produce uh, cooling energy for the new market hall and for the other two buildings of the municipality for a total of around uh, 9,000 kilowatt hour of cooling energy produced by two uh, chillers. And these chillers then uh, throw away this uh, thermal energy get from the buildings thanks to waste wastewater heat exchanger. The wastewater heat exchanger has a so-called uh, clean water side, which is this side, which is linked to the chillers, and the uh, wastewater side, which is this side on the left. This is useful for the next slide, where I show you uh, a, a zoom, a focus on the temperatures and the flow rates on the two sides of the uh, heat exchanger for another typical day. First of all, you see a very good ER around 5.7 for this uh, wastewater cooled system, which is 20% higher than a reference case, which would be an air cooled system with 4.87. While here in the charts, you see that the uh, flow rate in this day of the wastewater was lower than the flow rate at the clean water site linked to the chiller. So for this reason, you see also that the delta T on the uh, wastewater site is higher between the blue line and the orange line in comparison of the uh, delta T on the other side between the yellow and the green line. While the external temperature uh, in Budapest, you see in summer can be high, uh, like 32 degrees C as shown in this day. Then uh, the second, the last slide uh, on Budapest show you the effectiveness of the new uh, heat uh, exchanger cleaning method that was uh, used and implemented. And here you see how the heat exchanger effectiveness increased from 68% to 74% after the, the cleaning of the heat exchanger. Now we move to the last case, uh, the last package, the one composed by PV electric heat pump and phase change material heat batteries. Here I show you the results for Chorzo case study. And uh, in this summer typical day, we use the system for the production of domestic hot water. And thanks to the uh, PCM heat batteries, we managed to achieve a very high self-consumption of the PV uh, electricity, which is up to 73%. And so we managed to uh, get from the electricity grid just the remaining 26% needed to run the chiller, which produced the domestic hot water and some other uh, auxiliary plugs, which are connected to our system, like common lightning and circulation pumps. Uh, here, the focus is done on the PCM heat batteries. So here you have one day, and you see that in the first part of the day, until 4 p.m., we managed to uh, use the energy stored in the PCM 
to produce the domestic hot water. When, when we achieve a threshold, the minimum threshold of uh, 40 degrees C, we uh, start to charge again the PCM uh, batteries. And uh, we can temporarily, simultaneously charge and discharge the heat batteries. So here you see how we are charging the heat batteries and at the same time, we are producing uh, hot water. Uh, in blue, you see the temperature of the water coming from the water main and then uh, the dashed lines are the flow rates uh, of the heat batteries or of the heat pump which charge the heat batteries. So in conclusion, uh, we uh, did a huge work and we managed to, to see how the system works. And we saw that, for example, the solar heating and cooling system in Valencia works uh, as expected by the simulation we did during the design phase. Now, what we could do to further improve the system is to uh, uh, improve the control strategy of the inlet temperature to, to the, the high inlet temperature to the uh, absorption chiller. In Budapest, we, we proved the feasibility of this kind of system, uh, large scale system using wastewater uh, heat exchanger. The new cleaning method uh, works well and uh, it improves the heat exchange effectiveness. And we uh, prove how uh, the use of a wastewater as energy sink or energy source is better in comparison of the use of external air. Uh, for the last package for Chorzu and Sofia, we saw uh, the advantages of the PCM heat batteries, which are modular heat batteries, which give us high flexibility in terms of installation and in terms also of uh, energy uh, management. So thanks to these energy strategies, we managed to achieve high self-consumption of the PV production up to 73%. And so we managed to limit the use of electricity from the grid. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alessandro, for your presentation. We can now proceed and um, uh, knowing more about the heat for cool exploitation strategy. So I introduce you, um, Hugo. Um, the floor is yours and you can now share your screen. Yes. Okay. So I'm Hugo Grasset from uh, Solentel. Uh, we were in charge of the uh, exploitation, exploitation strategy and approach um, for the Heat for Cool project. Um, so as far as the objectives, generally um, what we, you know, exploitation strategies are focused around identifying the key exploitable results of the project um, and then doing the sufficient analysis to identify the sort of market needs they answer uh, how to position them in terms of these market needs, and then also monitor the competition, um, establish the ownership structures over these key exploitable results, and generally all around establish business models and strategies to maximize uh, intellectual property value. Um, now, obviously, exploitation strategies generally um, contain a lot of information. So in this presentation, we decided to narrow it, and I'm basically going to present the main standalone key exploitable uh, results of the project, and then also a consolidated approach that was evaluated for exploiting the heat for cool uh, retrofit solution. So as far as our key exploitable results, um, we have five key exploitable results that are basically identified and that span the whole renovation value chain uh, from the initial part of the project. So the retrofit design planner tool, um, where you know the initial designs and system designs are being done, then the construction phase and installation phase, which is basically our hardware with uh, the innovative heat exchanger, the solar uh, PV assisted heat pump, uh, and then the solar assisted thermal driven absorption heat pump and the she bends in the end during the operational phase of the project. So as far as our first um, retrofitting design planner to our first KER, um, basically the KER ownership as far as uh, intellectual property rights go belongs to uh, Technalia. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna go over the main functions too much uh, as it's been described already, but basically from a market perspective and a value perspective, um, we essentially have a tool that's uh, providing KPRs in an early stage of the project. And in terms of market needs, we're essentially alleviating barriers in the energy efficient renovation market that exist in terms of uh, preliminary uncertainty in terms of savings. Um, and all those uh, barriers can sort of complicate third party financing uh, at early stage, for instance, for uh, energy efficient renovations. Um, and the basic exploitation approach that's foreseen here is actually offering the product as uh, for free, the basic product for free, which should uh, kind of tend to naturally orient users towards the heat for cool uh, solutions and environment. 
Um, so as far as our construction phase solutions or hardware solutions, uh, we have the, uh, as we were saying, basically one of the main uh, results is the innovative uh, heat exchanger. Um, so this obviously belongs to ThermoWatt, uh, and it is essentially an incremental change over their current um, system, which harvests energy from sewage water. Um, and basically what it entails is more efficient cleaning uh, and avoidance of sludge accumulation uh, with the heat exchanger, and therefore that leads to higher rates of efficiency. Um, and some of the unique selling points, obviously, of that uh, technology and the fulfilled market needs is one of the interesting points is its actual uh, flexibility and, and the fact that it can be um, sort of scaled at building level and also at district level. Um, obviously, from an exploitation point of view, we're looking at a direct sale from uh, Thermowatt of their system after implementing these technology improvements um, and potential distribution agreements uh, on uh, solar intensity. The uh, solar PV assisted uh, heat pump um, connected to the PCM heat storage. Uh, so basically this uh, result uh, is kind of joint, there's a joint ownership sort of at the SunAmp obviously owns the uh, PCM heat energy storage system while AES Solar uh, was in charge of the PV assisted uh, uh, system in uh, the project. Um, basically the main achievements here are the, are the fact that the technology has a higher percentage of, of uh, energy harvest or the higher percentage of uh, use for the uh, of the harvested energy for the final demand. Um, and so obviously here SunAmp will be looking from an exploitation point of view, will be distributing complete heat pump systems um, with the actual heat batteries um, to plug to their own projects and global projects as well as other OEMs. Um, as far as the solar assisted uh, thermal driven absorption heat pump, this obviously, uh, at least the absorption heat pump belongs to uh, Fahrenheit from an IPR ownership point of view. Um, one of the uh, sort of uh, unique, um, you know, as, as has been stated before, we're basically obtaining cooling from solar energy. One of the unique selling points here from this technology uh, in terms of market needs and what we've identified and how we've positioned it is uh, basically that it's, it's a technology that's particularly competitive um, in high temperature environments. Um, so it's it, uh, basically, presents uh, a lot of market opportunity for Southern European markets um, in which some of the other partners in the consortium were actually um, positioned. So there are sort of synergies and potential distribution agreements here that were explored as well. Um, as far as the CBEMS, which is uh, our last uh, result in the uh, use stage, um, one of the, uh, basically this result belongs to Watt & Volt. They plan on integrating uh, this project, this product, sorry, uh, within their product for portfolio um, and will be deriving revenue from uh, a license fees agreements and also the installation of the sensor network in the beginning. Um, but uh, basically one of the main uh, sort of unique selling points here is uh, rather than just uh, being uh, a sort of basic uh, uh, and having a basic analytical layer, we'll say um, it actually has the profiling uh, engine behind which um, basically tries to balance uh, as best as it can the user comfort with uh, energy efficiency uh, demands. Um, so, uh, if we move on, in the Heat for Cool project, we also tried to, uh, well, we, we provided um, a sort of uh, approach for a consolidated um, exploitation of the uh, retrofit solution as a whole as well. The thing is that the Heat for Cool project obviously has its own challenges and necessities, especially in the fact that we want all of the partners to be able to exploit the standalone products as we're just as it was just introduced. But we also want to maximize the innovation potential um, and sort of try to grasp as many um, sort of specific regional market opportunities as possible. Um, so basically our approach, uh, so far you can see it here, or the one that was evaluated uh, as far as a consolidated heat for cool retrofit solution um, goes, is uh, basically a virtual one-stop shop approach um, that's based on uh, structurally on a non-equity strategic alliance. Um, and basically this model, the way we modeled it uh, in our exploitation strategy is having an all-inclusive model um, in the, uh, basically in the markets where there are, where there is partner coverage uh, in terms of uh, contractors. So the, for instance, the markets that Solentel is in in Spain, or Iberia, and then a coordination model uh, in markets where the consortium doesn't have any contracting partners. Uh, 
So there would be a consulting agreement there uh, with contractors in those local markets to try and grasp as, as uh, have the biggest uh, market impact as possible, so to speak. Um, so in this slide, uh, the model that was evaluated, uh, you have certain of the, uh, you know, a couple of the main features uh, of that very model. Um, and I'm not going to go into detail of all of these, but uh, basically, um, I think that the main uh, interest here is uh, the distribution and capturing customers section, which sort of goes over the structure of it. Um, we're looking at basically offering it through a web platform, as was indicated, it's virtual uh, one-stop shop, uh, leveraging the partner networks and regional clusters. Um, and then also uh, considering the heat for cool retro sim, uh, the, the basic product is for free, given for free, we want to use that as a sort of initial hook to uh, uh, wrap customers in um, at the very beginning. Um, I tried to keep it short and sweet and stay within the time. So I think that uh, that's it from my part for the moment. Many thanks, Hugo, for your presentation. We can now proceed with the last presentation for today. Uh, and this is a policy presentation, so we will hear more about the current European uh, policies for the heating and cooling sector. And uh, I officially introduce Josephine. Hello, good morning, everyone. I hope you can see my screen and hear me well. Okay, I see yes. Serena and Nevin, so that's fine. So good morning, everyone. I'm Josephine van Beselare, and I'm head of EU affairs at the European Heat Pump Association. And I will zoom out a bit, and I will give you a broader overview of the heating and cooling policies that are currently discussed at European level. So this slide immediately gives a full overview of all legislation covering heat pumps. Of course, we don't have the time to go into this uh, in detail, but in general, if you look at the green part, that's the clean energy for all, um, for all Europeans package uh, that was closed in 2019. And this presents a whole range of very positive uh, legislation on uh, heat pumps. So if this is all implemented into national uh, legislation, this will certainly, um, increase the demand for heat pumps. Then you have the two white boxes in the middle, the F-gas regulation and eco-design regulation. These are more uh, technical, more complex regulation, uh, for example, on F-gas to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions, uh, emissions in F-gases and on eco-design to increase the, the efficiency of the project. If we then look at the, at the purple part, that's really what is being discussed at this very moment at EU level, this European Green Deal and climate law, which was also uh, highlighted before by uh, Eleftherios from the Commission. So this is a very important package. Uh, and I will get a bit more into detail about that. So the European Green Deal and the climate law propose to have a, a CO2 emission reduction of 55% by 2030. So that is what the commission proposed and it's currently um, under negotiation between the parliament and the council to arrive uh, at a number yeah, which will be arrive around this 55%. Uh, and this, um, new uh, target will also incentivize actually a whole the revision of this whole uh, green uh, package again so in june 2021 we expect a revision of the energy efficiency directive of the renewable energy directive and so on to reach uh, this new target um, then, yeah, in the framework, I'll go back again, in the framework of this European Green Deal and uh, climate law, two uh, other strategies and communications have been published, which are very positive for heat pumps, so I will go a bit deeper into those. So first of all, that's the EU energy system integration strategy. This has been published uh, last summer, so in July 2020. And for the first time, there's clear targets set for the electrification of heating. So the commission proposes to have 40% electrification of residential heating by 2030 and 65% electrification of uh, commercial heating also by 2030. And if we look at the current building stock and the current amount of heat pumps in place, this would mean a quadrupling of heat pumps by 2030. So this is very good for our sector and very ambitious as well. And also this strategy for the first time really identifies and lists all the current barriers that still exist for a um, large scale yeah, heat pump uh, deployment. Among others, the taxation of electricity, the lack of internalization of CO2 costs, and also the lack of public and pri private financing instruments. So all these they want to address again by mid 2021. So by with this new package that will come out, this revision of these green uh, legislative initiatives that I have shown you before. 
I'll go a bit more into detail about the cost issue. So here we see a comparison of um, yeah, a German study, which says actually that um, a heat pump is a relative cheap way uh, uh, to, to, to a relative cheap climate protection measure compared to others. Here they compare it to uh, replacing the, the German um, uh, electricity mix with a completely by PV or with replacing a diesel car by an EV. So there, um, yeah, they conclude that a heat pump only uh, costs 45 euros to save one ton of uh, CO2. But if you have, yeah, this is relatively cheap, but this is not reflected in actually the energy price or in the, the OPEX, in the user costs. So we see in this graph that actually in most countries, both the electricity price and also the taxes and levies on electricity are higher than the gas prices and the taxes and levies on gas. So this is something that is currently discussed at EU level and will be addressed in the revision of the energy taxation directive and also the revision of the ETS directive. So this is a very hot topic at this moment. Then we have the renovation wave, which was also um, communicated as a part of this green deal and which has also been highlighted by, by Eleftherios. Also there, the heating and cooling sector is a key aspect to, um, to address uh, yeah, these renovation targets. So we see that heat pumps and the heating and cooling sector are really essential to achieve Europe's energy and climate targets. And this is all recognized in many, the many legislations that I have shown you before and they put clear targets. But um, now what is the next step? So we have this need to adjust the production to really increase this production to have the quadrupling of heat pumps by 2030. And our members, the industry say, we are ready, we can increase our production. But just increasing production is not enough. You also need an increase in demand. And therefore, again, you need to tackle this electricity taxation issue, the CO2 price signal, the fossil fuel subsidies that still exist. Um, so these are aspects that need to be addressed uh, at the moment. So again, uh, yeah, to conclude, we see that the advantages of heat pumps are recognized uh, as essential for energy and climate targets that the industry can deliver, but we need, a we need framework conditions that trigger real end user uh, demand. So if you're really interested in this and you say, I want to raise the impact of heat pumps to, to, to achieve our energy and climate targets, then I would say join our association. We have uh, at the moment 140 members. We represent 22 countries. We are active in many international corporations and in many projects such as the Heat for Cool project. You can find information on our website, ehpa.org, or you can also contact me or uh, Serena for more information. Thank you very much. Many thanks, Josephine, for your presentation. Now, before we uh, start with the uh, panel discussion, I would like to uh, briefly share my screen and remind to all of you um, that uh, these are the social media links for the Hate for Cool project. So I really suggest you to have a look at the website because in here recently we really published uh, many new things. Uh, we have a new leaflet presenting all the demo sites results. And also last week, we also published a white paper about digitalization in the heating and cooling sector. You can um, download for free. And uh, in there, so we have a policy overview, a status of the art about digitalization in heating and cooling. And we also present the heat for cool as um, case studies. Then, of course, you still um, have time to uh, talk, uh, let's say, about this event and mention um, us on Twitter and LinkedIn. You can use the hashtag. Uh, moreover, um, I would like to remind you that uh, all the presentation plus the video of this recorded webinar and the uh, leaflet of the um, live graph recording that Colleen is making will be shared with you via email in two days. So you will receive it, plus it will also um, be published on the website and social media, uh, social media channels. So really um, keep in touch with us and have a look at the website. Now I would like to... Uh, Stop sharing my screen now. <laughs> um, and 
here. Uh, so I would like to initiate the um, Q&A session. Uh, while we do that, I suggest that Colleen maybe can share her iPad. So while we, let's say, further discuss and uh, answer to your questions, we can uh, keep an eye on the live graph uh, um, recording. And um, yes, I will leave the floor to um, Paolo to moderate the Q&A session. Thank you, and Serena. Can you hear me well? Yes. Excellent. Okay, thank you. I just uh, would like to thank uh, uh, once again all the speakers for these interesting presentations. Uh, we covered uh, all the um, policy support aspect with the presentation of uh, Eleftherios from the European Commission. Uh, we also introduced the project uh, at the beginning. You also had a, a clear view of all the um, heating and cooling uh, 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 renewable energy based uh, uh, technologies uh, implemented at pilot site level, uh, which was then uh, followed by um, interesting uh, presentation of Rossano regarding the, the goals that, the, that were achieved. Um, the, the exploitation of the, of the key exploitable results presented by Hugo, and then the, another interesting presentation from uh, uh, Josephine on the uh, European heating and cooling policy framework. Uh, I must be uh, honest, we received uh, uh, quite a lot of questions and I would also like to uh, thank uh, everyone who uh, from the panel who has already um, answered these questions uh, live. Uh, I saw lots of questions for, um, uh, for uh, Budapest. Um, so uh, thank you, Pal, for, for answering all these uh, questions. Uh, also, Jakub and uh, all the panelists who have already answered. Um, what can I say? Okay, we, we understand that eating and cooling uh, plays this, uh, let's say, very crucial role in the EU ambition towards the transition to the uh, clean and carbon uh, neutral economy by 2050. So um, we, we, we have presented today uh, the, the uh, heating and cooling, some of uh, the heating and cooling integrated technologies that can uh, uh, support this, uh, this transition. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, ask, uh, uh, there are lots of questions, but I would like to uh, ask the panel. Uh, so starting from uh, uh, Jakub, there's a question directed to, to him, uh, why uh, Jakub uh, at the heat pump uh, with more power. Um, why was not, why, sorry, I, I, I reread this because it was uh, uh, formulated in a, in a not very clear way. So why a heat pump with more power was not used to fully exclude gas boilers from the system in your system in uh, um, in a horse of, if you can, uh, uh, if you can answer that and also follow up question always uh, still for Jakob, why the circulation pumps and boilers in the apartments should be independent like uh, uh, you did in your building. Uh, I leave this to you, uh, Jakob. Okay, uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, so for the first one about the heat pump, uh, in the heat for cool project, uh, we aimed uh, many to uh, not exchange all the system in the building, but uh, to retrofit it. So we wanted to use as much uh, existing uh, systems uh, infrastructure as uh, we had. That's why uh, we decided to left the, to leave the uh, gas boilers and the installation based on the gas boilers in the apartments. Also, they uh, work as uh, some kind of a uh, backup in, so we have two separate systems which uh, can uh, work if the other one is uh, not working properly or uh, there are some uh, other works performed. Uh, also, even regarding this uh, 30 kilowatts uh, heat pump, it was required for uh, us to perform the uh, full modernization of the electricity uh, installation in the common spaces of the building to, uh, to handle mainly the heat pump as uh, during the start of the heat pump, it needs uh, 26 uh, kilowatts of energy. 
So uh, that's why the installation has to be uh, has to be uh, renovated. And uh, so mainly the issue is we wanted to use as much existing infrastructure in the project as we already had. Uh, regarding the second questions, um, as uh, I uh, shortly presented in the presentation, uh, the uh, modernization regarding the independent work on the uh, gas boiler and uh, the circulation pump is uh, due to, uh, so with this we wanted to minimize as possible uh, the uh, gas consumption by the boilers. Uh, so uh, the circulation pump is running the water in the apartment, taking the heat from uh, the heat pump uh, circuit by through the heat exchanger. But if uh, the uh, only if the heat provided from the heat pump is not enough, then the boiler will uh, start the gas burner, causing the uh, gas consumption. So we wanted to, uh, as much as possible, uh, maximize the use of the heat pump and minimize the gas consumption. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Jakub. Uh, there are uh, other questions related to uh, the pilot site in Budapest. One of them is uh, how, uh, PAL, uh, how do you calculate the necessary wastewater flow for your project? Yes. Uh, so wastewater flow, uh, we, we calculate on, uh, on the necessity of uh, the, uh, the heat produced. Uh, so uh, for one megawatt energy, we calculate around 3,500 cubic meter per day flow that is needed uh, for, for one, one site. So once we're speaking about, uh, let's say, uh, 10, uh, 10 megawatts, then we need, uh, of course, uh, uh, 35,000 cubic meter per day. So uh, it's a massive flow. Just to explain that uh, 3,500 cubic meter per day to understand better is around the 10,000 people's flow. So for around the uh, 10,000 square meter building, which is around one megawatt, we use around 10,000 uh, people's flow uh, as communal wastewater. And, and just one remark here uh, that uh, we are all speaking about wastewater, but I prefer the term sewage or sewage water. Uh, because this term is uh, describes is not a waste heat; it's a heat that is available in the in the sewer lines, and it's a renewable heat. So, so sewage is is renewable. Okay, thank you. Um, there is also a follow up question uh, for uh, you. Uh, I guess is also uh, applicable to other pilot site. What were your main challenges during the construction works on the demo site? If uh, you want to also answer this, because it was addressed to you, although it's applicable to, uh, I guess, other uh, pilot sites. Uh, Paul, go ahead. If, uh, uh, if yes, our site is, uh, is a bit special one, uh, having a very old building and completely, completely new one. Uh, the main interesting challenge was to harmonize uh, those uh, uh, inner systems of the, of the buildings. Uh, and uh, and also, as far as the end users are different, uh, the heat demand uh, in terms of temperature is also different. So the radiators need higher temperatures uh, since uh, in New Market Hall we, we could provide lower temperatures. So that was an, an important challenge. And and uh, uh, there was an operating uh, city center around where we had to, to work with. Uh, so uh, we we made our, our installations with um, with a very low disturbance of uh, our environment. It was very important also. Okay, thank you again. Um, a question uh, regarding the pilot site in Valencia, uh, which has been the greatest barrier for the technology implementation in the building uh, in Valencia? Uh, uh, Javi, if you can mm -hmm. answer this question, yes. please. Thank you. Okay. Uh... Greatest the most barrier. difficult we had was during the design phase, in order to design the solar thermal system, we had to, we had uh, some municipality regulations because the building is in the old center of the city. So we could not, we couldn't, but design the solar system in the optimal 
orientation zones, we, we, we had to, to design it in order to comply with the regular munici uh, municipality regulations. Okay, thank you. Uh, and also for the recooler placement. Okay, we also heard uh, a similar problems, uh, unfortunately, with uh, with other pilot sites during the course of uh, uh, the project life cycle, uh, which I think uh, we we still um, we have to take this in consideration uh, also for replicability uh, in in the in the future of uh, replicability of these technologies in the future. Uh, there's also another uh, question uh, regarding Valencia uh, to mm -hmm. Javi. Uh, yeah. um, I'm going to read it to you. Which are the requirements for the installation of this technology in order to be feasible? So, uh, okay. Requirements, mm -hmm. yeah. Since we need a, a surface for the solar system, system, we need a surface in which we have solar radiation. This is the first thing. And also the absorption unit needs, uh, to, be, needs to be connected to a recooler then also a uh, space outdoors in order to place the recooler is also needed. So we need a, a place for the recooler and a surface for the solar thermal collectors. Thank you. Um, that there were also uh, there was a question to, to Hugo regarding the uh, the key exploitable results, but I believe that he has uh, covered this in the presentation. So, which were the, in fact, the key exploitable results uh, of the it for cool um, projects and solutions that we have presented? I believe it's already been covered, so I'm not going to read it out to you. Uh, there, a question to uh, uh, Rosano Scorcia. Uh, so, uh, did COVID emergency affect the system's operation? Uh, Rosano, if you can take this, it was actually addressed to you. Um, yes, yes. Unfortunately, the, the COVID emergency changed a lot of our uh, plan for the monitoring activities. So we, we had some delays in the installation of the instruments and the checking of it because we can't go on, on the pilot site. And, and moreover, uh, it changed a lot how the buildings were used. So, for example, for Valencia, which is uh, a building with uh, out of apartments used for uh, tourism. Uh, we had a low occupancy uh, during the, the summer, and the same happened in, uh, in Budapest for the district system with uh, needs which were lower than expected. And so, yes, the, the COVID emergency changed the, how the buildings were used, so also uh, a, a possible comparison with the data that we had from the energy audit we, we did uh, the beginning of the project four years ago, we are not comparable with uh, the monitoring data that we have uh, now due to these, uh, to these issues. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ross. Um, I uh, will now switch uh, to more policy related uh, uh, policy support related question. The, mm, there is one for, um, for Eleftherios uh, regarding the renovation wave. So um, how the renovation wave will actively support the uh, renovation of building uh, of uh, specifically worst performing buildings and tackle energy poverty. Um, Eleftherios. Yes, so the energy poverty is highlighted across the documents of the uh, renovation wave. One initiative is the affordable housing initiative, which uh, uh, will have 100 uh, districts which uh, will be renovated and they will act as uh, lighthouses for uh, further investments on uh, uh, low income uh, uh, regions and uh, neighborhoods. And uh, another uh, idea is, uh, which uh, it's investigated, nothing is uh, already decided, is to use the revenues from the emission trading system 
to support the national uh, funding uh, programs for uh, renovation with giving priority to uh, uh, low performing uh, buildings of uh, low income uh, families. And uh, it also investigated uh, uh, to set some uh, minimum uh, performance requirements in order for uh, building owners uh, to, be, let's say, forced somehow so that they renovate uh, uh, their buildings. Okay, okay. Very interesting, and thank you for, for, for the update um, on this. There, there is also a, a question uh, related to uh, uh, Josephine uh, from EPA. Um, how could uh, a project like it for Cool help convincing policymakers of heat pump benefits and the need to trigger more and use demand? Uh, yes, I think a project like this is very important because when talking to policymakers, it's always better that you have concrete examples and use cases and maybe testimonies from users or from project developers where they really say these are solutions that work. And very concretely in the Heat for Cool project, yeah, you focus on integrating these different solutions, also storage, PV, heat pumps, and so on. And for example, in the renovation wave, one thing that is highlighted is um, to standardize industrial solutions um, yeah, as part of a comprehensive renovation. So these integrated solutions that these should be yeah, industrialized um, so they can be become cheaper and become uh, yeah, deployed at a large scale. And I think by using this pilot project and seeing what are the, the barriers, how can we improve the development of these integrated solutions that, yeah, this, this can concretely, yeah, contribute to policymakers. And for example, when we have uh, those meetings and we say, this is a key solution that we can yeah, really show what, how this uh, should be done. And it's not only theory, but it's, it's connected to uh, a concrete uh, practice. Thank you, Josephine. Um, the, there's also a question to all the panelists. Um, uh, please feel free to, to, to answer. Uh, the, the question is, uh, what were the main overall project challenges and what are the methodological aspects that could be considered to speed up the implementation of retrofitting projects? So I invite uh, uh, any of the panelists member to, uh... Okay, I, I can try to <clears throat> answer yeah, this question. Thank you, Marcello. Yeah. If I understand it correctly, it's about the methodology. And yeah. I think it for cool was uh, more a technology oriented rather than process oriented project. So we uh, really focused a lot on the development of innovative eating and cooling solutions. But of course, at the same time, we uh, experienced uh, quite big challenges in the implementation and the commission of the pilot site. And, um, and things were complicated by several factors, distance, language barriers, um, different teams working in parallel uh, across the different phases. And um, uh, overall, it was a great opportunity to learn how to um, manage from the methodological point of view uh, the renovation uh, projects. And I think that, and I hope that in the future, uh, there will be digital inno innovations to support this process in order to speed up the renovation process and, and to decrease the cost associated to that. Uh, including the design cost and the commissioning cost and so on. And, and also automating many tasks that today are performed manually, like, uh, for example, the collection of the information required to, to perform uh, simulations and to decide uh, what kind of design best uh, suits our, our needs. Uh, in principle, such tools already exist, like uh, building information modeling, for example, but in, uh, in my opinion, those tools are not uh, um, made uh, for a small scale projects that we, we dealt with uh, in Hitfoku. 
and they also target, uh, I think, new new construction rather than renovation. And also, I think that BIM does not link easily to building energy modeling and simulation. And so, in my view, the detailed digital replica of the, the overall plant and building system can and the possibility to perform realistic energy simulation will be fundamental. In, uh, in this business in the future. And, and we really look forward to see these new um, digital platforms, uh, which I think should be also more affordable <laughs> in terms of price uh, for, for this uh, sector. Thank you. Thank you, Marcello. Um, uh, can I ask, Serena, are we, uh, do we have a-, a We still have three question? minutes. Okay. We, we still have three minutes, so I don't know if um, any there are, other there are, panelists. There are a lot of uh, uh, questions, uh, and uh, we will do our best also to reply to those who uh, we couldn't reply. Uh, if there are any, we haven't replied yet live in the Q and A uh, box. Uh, the, if we have time, there is another question uh, related to um, more, I would say, uh, eleftherios. Uh, related to uh, the policies that the European Commission can implement to overcome uh, the barrier related to um, uh, cost and affordability. So the, the question I read it, uh, to you is, if we take into consideration the heating and cooling solution for building retrofitting presented today, uh, don't you think that such, technology, such, te such technologies are still too costly to be afforded? and what are the uh, policies uh, the European Commission can uh, implement to, uh, to overcome this barrier? I think, the, the, first of all, the challenge there is uh, to communicate that, yes, maybe they are costly as an investment in the beginning, but at the long term, the benefits are, uh, are higher. I think it was also very clearly shown at uh, Josephine's slides that uh, but the long term, uh, you have a, uh, uh, it's a more worth investment. Uh, from our perspective, uh, one of the initiatives uh, in the renovation wave is uh, the expansion of the eco design and the eco labeling uh, scheme. Uh, I think it's very successful. Most of us, when we are going to buy an appliance, we are looking for an uh, A+, plus, A++, plus plus and so on. So I think uh, such a scheme will um, uh, make uh, the, to the uh, people investing in their heating and cooling system to identify those solutions that uh, in the long term uh, will uh, benefit them uh, from their uh, consumption uh, point of view. And uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are considering uh, to set up uh, some uh, minimum energy requirements. So uh, there will be a higher need for uh, those system and then, and then uh, a, a bigger market uptake will uh, of course bring down the costs. More company will invest uh, since there will be a demand um, uh, for more heat pumps and so on. So I think this gradually will uh, bring down the cost. Thank you. Thank you, Eleftherios. Uh, Serena, um, let, let me know. I think uh, it's 12 o'clock. So uh, I don't know if you want to continue this or we stop if here you... today. Uh, if you want to proceed with the last question, we can do that. Otherwise, we can leave it here. So yes. do you have another maybe policy question since we are treating the topic? Yes, there was one. Uh, is, uh, uh, yeah, what do you see? Uh, I think it was, uh, uh, well, can, anybody can pick it up, but uh, it was related maybe to what uh, Josephine um, has, has uh, illustrated uh, earlier in that presentation. And what, what do you see, um, it's partially maybe already answered, but anyway, what do you see the link uh, between current uh, high level policy discussions on heating and cooling uh, and a concrete project like Eat for Cool? So what do you see the link between current high level policy discussions on heating and cooling and a concrete project like Eat for Cool? 
Yes, as you mentioned, I partly answered it actually in my previous uh, response. So also the measures um, that uh, also uh, Eleftherios mentioned, for example, um, yeah, these minimum energy uh, requirements and so on. For that, we will also need, uh, yeah, innovative systems, innovative uh, connections of, of different uh, types of renewable energy systems. Um, also, yeah, when we have these high level measures that are proposed, it always helps to have a concrete uh, example of how it's, it's done in practice. What are the barriers that are um, that that in the in those projects are are perceived as as the most difficult to tackle, and then we can uh, relate back to policymakers and say, okay, these and these barriers we have experienced in the heat for cool project, do this to tackle them, and, and that way these type of solutions can can be uh, deployed at large scale. So this is it's a, a high level answer maybe, mm -hmm. but sure. uh, if we go through the concrete project results, I'm sure we will find even more concrete. Uh, examples to link directly uh, yeah, to the high level uh, policy measures currently discussed to yeah to convince uh, policymakers uh, okay yeah, I thank think you can we can we I just like to thank all the uh, panel uh, all the panelists and also the people who uh, contributed to uh, formulate uh, uh, these questions live uh, so yeah I would I would if it's okay Serena would close the uh, just a second, but I would like to add, uh, so another, so yeah, also from my side, really thank to all the panelists, uh, also to the other Heat for Cool partners uh, who are here in the uh, online conference, also a uh, big thank also for the participants, for the very interesting questions received and for being here uh, with us today. And also a special thank to Colleen for this amazing uh, leaflet with takeaway messages that she has made during uh, uh, the conference. Really great work because it was not easy to follow up uh, uh, all this presentation with only 10 minutes each. And I think she really extracts the uh, key messages. And uh, yes, as I said, so thank all of you and you will receive all the materials in uh, two days from now and everything will be posted on the Hit for Cool uh, website and social media. So a big thank to all of you and we can now officially close the webinar. Um,